Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ Show. Today we're going to be talking about work and igniting your career. And we have Chris Holmes here who is going to be talking about strategies and tactics to unleash your potential. So welcome, Chris. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to have you here. I'm 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 particularly interested because I've never talked to a a live executive recruiting person. <laughs> so I wanted you to tell us a little bit about your background um, and what executive recruiters do because um, I've never met a person before who does your job. Got it. All right. Well, first of all, my background, CJ, is uh, I'm a Kellogg MBA. I mm-hmm. spent a decade in marketing uh, at places like Kraft, j and a company called Herman Miller Furniture Company and a division of Nestle Purina before switching over to executive recruiting a little over 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was very lucky to switch over. Does that make you like 100 years old? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> when I add all that together, I'm like, you must be 100 years old. Okay. My kids tell me, yes. <laughs> uh, but I'm really lucky that I switched over because it fits me better than marketing does. Mm-hmm. And yet my marketing expertise makes me a much better recruiter because I specialize in marketing. So that's my background. Now, what does a recruiter do? So I will first of all tell you there's a wide spectrum of recruiters and, and people have come up against really uh, bad recruiters who kind of call and say, honey, do I have a job for you without knowing a thing about you? Mm-hmm. And they're just trying to sell you. Mm -hmm. And then there are what I call the gold standard recruiters. And they're the ones who really want to partner with you throughout your career Mm -hmm. and want to understand not just your background, but who you are and what your goals are and what your personal needs are. And they try to match those with opportunities they have. And that's how we operate. And that's why I love my job. Mm. So I believe that recruiters can be an enormous resource for you. They can, if you find a great recruiter who is a niche in your industry, treat them like gold. They should be a resource and a mentor throughout your career. Whether or not they ever place you, they can be somebody who can help you make decisions about different career paths. They can help you as you get to a senior level find talent for your organization and be a wonderful resource. Even as you get other jobs, I have people calling me, asking me to help them negotiate. And I'm happy uh, to okay, because so, we had such a deep relationship. So when I was at Microsoft in marketing, I used to get yes. phone calls from people saying, hi, this is so-and-so and I'd like to talk to you about. And I was like, who are you? What do you want? <laughs> no, I'm not interested in finding a job. Like, I don't. why are you calling me? And so... Uh, not that this was a good good pers- perhaps he did not fit the gold standard this person who yes. called me so um how do i so i i actually coach people who are looking for jobs in marketing in finance mm-hmm. and and they're mm-hmm. looking for these gold standard recruiters how do i yeah. even find um these gold standard recruiters so that's a great question a uh, couple ways one is ask people ask your peers ask bosses and and position it is not that I'm looking to go anywhere, but I'd love to get to know a couple great recruiters for the long term. I think it's an important thing to do for my career. Right. Um, So that's one way. The other thing is go look online. You know, if you go look online for CPG recruiters or marketing recruiters, a couple are going to pop to the top. Go look at the website. Hmm. And if it's a really good quality website, and they have a lot of testimonials, Mm -hmm. go look at them, the partners or the top recruiters and go to their LinkedIn pages and look and see how many recommendations do they have? What do people say about them? Because that's a really good, what are the testimonials? Mm -hmm. Okay, got so. And those are really great ways. So if I was a finance, like I was a CFO and I was Mm -hmm. looking for a recruiter, I would type in simply CFO recruiter find them on LinkedIn, find out the website, and then find out who gets actually good reviews. Um, that's how you would do it. And so, and how would I even know what to type? Because sometimes, uh, so someone wanted to do business development recruiter. Now, it really kind of depends on whether the person who does that recruiting has typed in business development or sales. Like, I don't, how do you make, is there like a, an organization that, that all recruiters belong to so I can kind of find it that way? 
Well, there is something called the Pinnacle Society, and I'm lucky enough to be a member of it. And the Pinnacle Society is the top 80 recruiters in North America. Uh, so that's a good place to start. Okay. And we go across all industries. So I would go there first okay, got to it. see if, is there somebody who's a Pinnacle member who specializes in my industry? Okay, because those are, the, someone, Pinnacle has already pre-selected people that they're like, oh, these yeah. are the top in the field, go to them. Yes. So I can kind of pre-screen by going there. Okay, that's a huge right. tip. All right, so yes. the gold standard, you said, are people who actually get a sense of your goals. They get a sense mm -hmm. of your needs. And yeah. And it sounds like a relationship you have for life, not just like, I have a job, here it is, honey, you know, like you're saying. Right. So right. Um, what, what does a recruiter then, like, h how do you go about even finding people? Like, what, what are you looking, like, are you going to LinkedIn and typing in marketing and find, like, how do you find people to even be part, start building the relationship with? Um, so we have a database of over 60,000 people that okay. we've talked to and built relationships with. I have also a team of folks mm -hmm. who as junior people graduate from business schools and go to the top marketing organizations. They find them and put them on our database and we start talking to them. And so oh. we start building relationships early on. Uh, but as we get jobs that are out of our sweet spot, we do go to LinkedIn and we look at who are the people who are in this new area. We get to know them. And then we source other people. And so we start building these new verticals. Uh, okay. So if I get, like I did when I was really early in my career and I had no idea, it's like, hi, this yeah. is so-and-so. I want to talk to you. I'm like, why? What do you want right. to do with me? <laughs> why are you calling right. me? A better approach would have been, sure. It's because I wasn't really interested in a job at that right. point. I had just started. Had I just right. said, sure, I'd love to talk to you. This would be engaging in a relationship. And what would be the like, what would be the best way to engage in a relationship with someone like you or the yeah. MBAs that call? What would I be doing during those initial calls? Yeah, I would say I'm happy to spend five minutes with you mm -hmm. and then see how they operate. See if they tell you about themselves, if they ask questions about you, or if they start just pitching you jobs. If they oh. pitch you jobs it's probably somebody you might listen to jobs in the future, but you don't want a long-term relationship. Uh, if they ask you questions and they're looking, you know, to get to know you for the long term, uh, then you do want to get to know them and spend time with them. So part of it's gut. And also, do you like them? Is uh, it somebody who you trust? Because uh, those are the people. Hmm. Right, so I have a question about business models and how um, business recruiters work. So I was told, and perhaps erroneously, that business recruiters get a finder fee. So in a lot of ways, the people who are like, I'd love to pitch you a job are pitching a job because they're going to get like some immediate fee. So the sooner they place you, the better it is for them. Is that true? Is that not true? How does it really work? So the reality is that recruiters are typically paid by the client mm -hmm. um, and the client, it's usually a percentage of compensation. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, so there's a couple things about that, whether they place you or somebody else, they're going to get paid. Mm -hmm. um, and so their goal is to find the right person for the role because mm -hmm. they want to make the client happy, but they also are looking for a long-term relationship with you. So they're going to try to bring the right roles to you. Mm -hmm. The other thing just for people to realize is while they work for the client and they certainly are trying to do right by the client, they're also trying to do right by you in terms of negotiating a, a compensation package that is fair to both parties. Mm, okay. Got it. So that is part of the job of the recruiter to yeah. basically do that. Okay, got it. So then, so, and then how, how do you, so now that, now let's go on to the other role, which is you're thinking, okay, I have like 10 different people that I have relationships with. Sure. How are you kind of deciding which of those 10 people, like how, so when you, so a, a client comes, a company says, I'd like to hire this kind of marketing person. Mm -hmm. In your mind, what kind of pops up or what are, what's the criteria that you're using to pick which of the relationships you have are a good match? Um, usually it's a combination of who has the right skill set, mm -hmm. 
So the capabilities, oftentimes the company's looking for people who have worked big and small mm. because they want people who have the strategic wherewithal, but also can be scrappy mm -hmm. and can work without the resources. And then it may also be a fit with the culture. So yeah. there's usually some um, tangible and intangible. Mm. Uh, the other piece obviously is compensation. And we usually will give the client a range of people. Sometimes we'll go above what they say they can pay because we'll say, you know, here's somebody who we think could knock the ball out of the park, but you are going to have to stretch to get them. On mm -hmm. the other hand, if you want to go on the cheap, here's somebody we think has a lot of potential, but they don't have as much experience. You've got to meet the people and then decide where do you want to lean in. Ah, interesting. And then I get this all the time. They've actually told me an X number, like, tell me how much I want to get paid. Should I tell them? Should I not? And I said, just tell them a range because I don't know. I mean, is that the best guidance? I think that's great guidance because in reality, none of us, even I don't know what lever the client really has that they can pull. Mm. And I, I'm a big believer, even when you're negotiating, you don't want to back them in a corner. Mm. Mm. You want to say, you know, I need help here, but I'm flexible in terms of how you help me. Mm. It could be a base. It could be a bonus. You could do a sign on bonus. I want to get us both on the same side of the table trying to figure out this problem together. Okay, so if I have a great gold standard recruiter, they're going to try to help me negotiate oh, a, yeah. a fair rate whether and negotiate the right package for me. I yes. see. That's interesting. So next time um, you get a call from a recruiter, check if they're the gold standard, and if they are, yeah. build a relationship. I had no idea because I've only had um, non-gold standard recruiters. <laughs> but I'm hearing a couple different things, and you talk about this in your book, Ignite Your Career. You talk about building you know, a, a kind of a long-term career. So what's, what's interesting in the marketing, you said like work for small companies, so they're scrappy, work for big companies, so they understand. Like, how do I think about my career when I'm thinking about, well, what are this, how do I craft the set of experiences that will position me well for lots of different opportunities? What's a good way of thinking about that? Yeah, CJ, that's a great question. And the chapter two in my book is the phases of your career. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's three phases. There's the learn, do, and leverage. Mm -hmm. And in the learning phase, that's where you want to go to the big company, or you mm -hmm. want to learn the gold standard. And that's mm -hmm. where you're building your foundation. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to learn those best practices mm -hmm. because that's where, the way that I always think about it is that's where you're building your tools and you're filling your toolbox with really quality tools. Mm. In the doing phase, it's when you've learned how to do things and now you're taking that toolbox and you're going and say building a house mm. and you build a bunch of houses until you become an expert at doing lots of different, well, I'll say mm. architectural designs. Mm -hmm. And after you become an expert at doing over and over and over, at that point, you shift to the leveraging phase. Mm -hmm. And that's when you can move to a smaller company because you know it, how to do it. And you're ready to teach other people mm. how to do it because you've honed your best practices. You excel at doing and delivering. Mm -hmm. And now you're ready to leverage that experience. And being at a smaller company where you can be a big fish in a small pond is a perfect scenario for you to be set up for success. So learn, do, leverage. At each phase, you're looking for a different thing. Ah, uh, okay. So it's different. You can think about these things as different parts of your career. And and how about um, for people who are like, I've never done, you know, I'm, I'm switching from a tech role to a marketing role, which is a completely yeah. different... Do I have to start the process all over again or, and how do I call someone like you where it's like, can you please take me? I mean, how does that, can I call the recruiter or do I have to wait for the recruiter to call me? Um, no, you don't have to wait. So you can call the recruiter. Um, so, okay. So uh, you, you'll realize talking to me that I'm a really visual person. Yeah. And another visualization is, I believe you think about your career like a tree. Mm -hmm. And as I talk to marketers, I tell them the goal is to build a really sturdy trunk. That's like at that learn phase, build that sturdy trunk and get up high enough on the trunk so that if you decide to branch off, 
you either have that sturdy trunk to come back to, or there are a lot of other overlapping branches you can move to. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I tell people. Now, if you are in tech and you're moving over to marketing, the question is, did you build enough relevant skills? Is your trunk sturdy enough? Mm -hmm. that there are relevant and overlapping branches, some which may be marketing-based, mm -hmm. that you can step onto, that you can then leverage that will be relevant to the marketing world. Right, so it's transferable skills from going yes. from tech to marketing. So, But right. all of a sudden I'm talking to you and I want to say, please give me a chance, Chris, to go into marketing. Yeah. How do I actually pitch myself to you i mean usually it's the other way around how do i pitch myself and what how do i do i write a cover letter how do i even approach you i would say you think about you talk to people in marketing mm -hmm. and i would say tell me about the skills um, that you use every day tell me about what you do and then you think about what you've been doing in the tech world mm -hmm. and what is transferable mm. okay. um, it, it's kind of like um my son worked at Amazon out of undergrad, mm -hmm. and he talked about how people coming from the CPG world sometimes would really struggle mm -hmm. because Amazon is a different world. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the, not the skills transfer very well, but it's very different way of operating. Mm. And so it's kind of the same thing. You've got to figure out which skills transfer well mm -hmm that you can demonstrate, you can leverage a marketing capability. Okay, so, so that's what you I see. So when I talk to you, I'll say, okay, Chris, you know, for, you know, I actually learned how to like deliver results and bias for action and customer obsession from Amazon. And I can bring right. all those things to Kellogg or whatever. So it's basically right. trying to figure out. So when I call you, figure out how to remarket myself, take the same skills and repackage yeah. myself. Then you're interested in talking, but can I just cold call you or like, how do I? You can, you can cold call me. And, and especially if there's somebody who you know well, who's in marketing, who can make the introduction. Ah, okay. Better to actually try to find someone who knows someone who will then say, Chris, would you talk to a friend of mine who right. is interested in moving to marketing? Then you can kind of talk to them and see what's happening. That's going to be the easiest way of doing it because good recruiters have a lot on their plate and they're busy and it's not that they don't want to talk to you and help, but but they have a lot of all right. They have a lot of stuff going on. And do yes. I have to get everything all packaged together? Do I have to have my resume done and and everything in order to even meet with you? Or are you willing to no. entertain a call to like just this random call from a friend of a friend? Yeah, I am. okay. Yeah. Okay, because that's the part, hard part, because some people are like, I don't know what my resume should look like, but I have all these transferable skills from Amazon, but I don't know exactly what to do. So right. that would be something that you would help them market themselves into this other role. Yes. Got well, it. And that's one of the things coming out of the book that we offer services now. Resume writing, interview prep, negotiation, and then complete coaching as well to help people do that because we have a lot of career switchers. Yeah, I love it. Okay, we've been talking about to Chris Holmes, the author of this book, Ignite Your Career Strategies and Tactics to Unleash Your Potential. Thank you so much. And in the next segments, we're going to be talking about the other parts of your book and okay. how to write resumes, build networks, apply, prepare for interviews, and then resign, <laughs> which I like. I think that's actually a really important one that often we neglect. So Very thank true. you so much. You're very welcome.